Hello, welcome to episode 35 of How to Play Like a Wild Pro. Today I'm going to show you a game I had in the 907 on Ghost Town Assault Attack. Um, in this session I was trying to 100% mark the 907 with full APCR, or at least no heat I should say. And uh, I got up to 99% and then I fell back down to 97 and I'm not sure if I'm going to try again for a while. I'll probably do it eventually, but I, I don't know. I'm just kind of bored of the 907 at this point. Um, this game in particular that I picked, I didn't p pick it particularly because uh, I thought it would be a great replay to learn from necessarily. I mostly just picked it because, first of all, the score is pretty good. And then second of all, I felt like my aim and my gameplay, like how well I was playing in this game in particular, was just very, very good. Like I felt like this is one of the best games that I've ever played, like skill-wise. Because my aim was basically perfect, I feel like. I um, mean, my trading was very good. But nonetheless, I'm still going to talk a little bit about what I like to do on this map. Um... At least in more Broly tanks. So the way that I've... <clears throat> the way that I've kind of... Uh, I've kind of changed the way that I play this map a little bit recently. So I usually... I What, what I used to do as a, is... Um, I would come through here. I would pre-aim this on the way... Um, this corner on the way across here. And then I would poke this corner early on and try to get shots on anybody who was coming into the city. And you would occasionally get one or two free shots, but you could also take damage in return. And sometimes there are TDs that like to sit back here and they just shoot you. So it's not really the best opening. So what I've been doing instead recently is something very similar, but slightly different. I come around this way um, and I, I post up somewhere around here. And I just pre-aim through this gap here because... People like to go to this corner over here and bleed this cross. And so if you sit here and preem them, then they'll oftentimes just go around the corner um, all willy-nilly, not really expecting anything, and then you'll get one or two free shots into them. So that's what I do in this game. I sit here and I preem. Actually, I don't. It's been a while since I played this game, as you can tell. Or since I played this this particular game. That's what I thought I did, but uh, what I actually, th I think that's what I was going to do. I think what actually happened, if I can recall correctly, is I saw this guy get spotted, and I decided to just come to the corner right away because I wanted to trade with him. Um, so yeah. That's what I do. I track him. I was aiming for that track shot, and I know I can put two for one, so that was kind of my goal. Because I know I out-reload this guy, so I was planning to poke poke initially, maybe surprise him and get off one shot, and then if I would get that one shot, then I would just leave and not bother to trade anymore. Um, if he shoots me back, then I just shoot him twice, and then I back off. But, it almost uh, doesn't work out for me, because um, an E4 pokes me, and I get lucky, and he only hits my track. And here, I, I go for a shot, because both of them fired. But there's actually a renegade behind, so I take an extra shot that was kind of risky if if I did make a mistake in this game that might have been it but you could argue that I should poke there and just risk it um, but now um, I'm noticing that there's a lot of people on this corner and I really I can't fight against an e4 so I don't bother and I'm just kind of waiting around now for something to happen sometimes people will push like this and then you can shoot them or they'll come around this corner, or they'll poke up over here, so... That's kind of what I was doing. But then an, an STB gets lit over here. And whenever somebody pushes up like this, they're just a free kill. You just come over here to this corner and kill them. I think my team's gonna kill the STB, so I... Don't bother shooting him, and I go for the TVP instead. Thankfully, he doesn't pen me at all. But 
But now they're committing around the corner a little bit. Um, looking for this T and H. So I kind of slow poke this corner because I realized that they might be flanking around here and I spot the low. That was a bad shot. Um, I kind of rushed that shot. Oh yeah, I also get lucky this game by the way. Um, with my with my shots. My RNG was just very good. My pen roll RNG and my accuracy RNG. I see our TNH is going is uh, going in, so I'm going to try to support him because I know he's going to die, but I can at least trade off of him and get in, get in a couple shots. And there you saw one thing that's nice about the 907, um, where he bounces me. The nice thing about the 907 is you can sometimes bait your haul around the corner, just exposing this part. And since it's so angled, people will just bounce it. So if you're trying to avoid damage, then it's good to do that. Another bad shot. That was... I should have avoided his gun. Watching this back, there's way more mistakes than I... Than I felt like there was when I was actually playing it. I track him there. Hoping the T95 doesn't shoot me. Now I'm mostly hold down on the T95 and I can just farm him. But the thing about the T95 Capula is if you don't hit it like um, perfectly, you will bounce unless you're firing heat or something. There's a, there was the weak spot that I was trying to show you in that one weak spot video. If you haven't watched that, I would recommend it. You shoot through the frontal tracks of the T T95 and you, you can pen it from the front if it's at the right angle. Here he's kind of gun blocking pretty well, but I just wait. So it didn't really feel like it, but I'm already up to 7k damage somehow, so. Here, the, the one thing that's important is that I don't take damage from both of them. As long as I... The, the bad thing to do in this situation would be to try to avoid them both at the same time because then you're just going to end up getting shot by both of them. Here I overextended, but I didn't know the lowest here until I came around the corner. Um, the optimal play is to just trade damage with one of them while avoiding the other one because then you're at least guaranteed not to take damage from the, from the other one. Um, and if you take damage from the one that you're trying to avoid then so be it but this guy actually finds an angle onto me I don't know if he hit my capola or not maybe I I guess he had my side I, I probably over angled but yeah, I get lucky and the low doesn't pen me but I take this opportunity of them reloading to get behind this wreck so I don't die <coughs> Trying to bait him into shooting, if possible. And there, I do the same trick where I just expose this part of my hull and he bounces it. So I get a shot into him. Now the game's basically over. I'm just looking for the EBR 90 and I expect him to be in these bushes somewhere. And he's dead, and I get all the spotting for him. So yeah, pretty good game. 8.7k damage. 3k blocks. That's one of the things that's nice about the 907, is it actually does have armor. Um, even though it's not reliable armor. Um, against tier 8s, it's pretty reliable. At least the hull armor is. And the turret, the turret was actually more bouncy than I remembered it being. Like, I played it back in the day, and I remember the turret was absolute garbage. 
but recently when I've been playing it, the turret has actually held up pretty well. Even though it really shouldn't, because a lot of guns can overmatch this or pen it with heat. And you, you can even shoot straight through it, or the capulas, but somehow it was working for me. But yeah, um, I'm not sure yet whether I'm going to include another 907 replay in this video, or if I'm just going to make a separate video. I'll probably just make a separate video, so this is probably going to be it for this video. If not, then I don't know. Um, you'll figure it out. You'll see whether there is another one or not. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. Um, actually, there's one thing that I forgot to talk about, and that's the equipment that I, that I run on this tank. In my opinion, you should definitely have a Rammer HP um, V-Stab loadout. If there's one loadout that you should have, it's that one. And while there's lots of different loadouts that can work on the 907, including like ones with turbo, with vents, um, with aiming unit. Um, the two that I like to run are the one that I just mentioned, and then I also like to run one with rammer, um, v-stab, and then improved aiming unit. And the reason why I use improved aiming unit over vents, because I usually just run um, v-stab, rammer, vents on most medium tanks for my DPM loadout. The reason why I run improved aiming unit on this thing instead of vents is because the fully aimed accuracy of the, of the 907 is not great. It's not like a Leo where you can snipe very well. Um, so the improved aiming unit helps a lot with that. Um, the other thing is this thing doesn't have a lot of shells, so you can't really afford to miss too many times. Especially in games with high potential, or where you're shooting a lot at heavily armored tanks, where you might have some bounces. And then the other reason why I bring it over vents is you shoot twice for every time an enemy shoots regardless of whether you have vents or not. So if you're playing against an E5 and he shoots and you shoot at the same time, you're still going to get two shots in um, whether or not you have vents or not. So the vents doesn't really help with trading that much. And... That's basically the case for pretty much every single tank, sing or at least not autoloader tank in the game, that you're going to shoot them two for one minimum, if not more. So yeah, that's why I bring that equipment. But I'll, I'll see you guys next time. Um, there will probably be another video very soon, like probably tomorrow. Alright, goodbye.